Well, good evening, everybody. I'm sorry for the uh, delayed start. The, uh, the Buddhist Society has been having all sorts of problems with its, its Zoom over the last half hour. Um, and uh, from where I'm sitting, which is <laughs> at home, it looks pretty good to me. Uh, but if anything, uh, you know, if it all falls apart during this evening, it's nothing to do with us. <laughs> We're victims of whatever's going on out there um up in the cloud or wherever it might be <laughs> so anyway it's i'm sure some people have come and found nothing is happening exactly the same thing by the way is, is going on with the tibetan buddhist class which is happening si simultaneously both in the in in the building 58 eccleston square and by zoom as well anyway anyway as i say we're running a bit late so let's press on with the class i'm just making sure that things are looking pretty good yeah okay so there again the usual sort of uh format to the class uh we'll um uh I'll, actually i'll I'll give a little introduction, a little talk to begin with, I think. Um, but then the, the usual the usual format, I think, is uh, uh, we'll sit, I'll give a bit of guidance. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, there'll be a little break uh, in the middle. And we'll sit some more. Uh, and then at the end, uh, which is probably, uh, I don't know, about an hour's time, but less than an hour, uh, we'll uh, call a halt and uh, we'll have any questions and discussion that anybody wants to bring up and in the meantime don't forget that although we're all on mute you'll be unmuted at the end but if anything comes to mind that you would like to uh, share please pop it in the chat box uh, i am keeping an eye on Yep, I'm keeping it on the chat right now. I'm sure Wongdu, who's very kindly looking after us this evening, will do the same. So send it through by chat if you want to. And as I say, I'm really thinking of questions, issues relevant to the class, but what could be relevant to the class is the sound qualities or is dreadful or whatever. Feel free to pop it in the chat box and if we can do something about it, we will. <sighs> right, so more people have popped into the class i think i want to welcome you to the basic meditation class of the buddhist society and that's a bit odd because i don't think there's any single word for meditation in buddhism <laughs> what there is in pali and sanskrit is the word bhavana bhavana means cultivation in this context mental cultivation and obviously one a component, one aspect, one part of mental cultivation, this is going back to the Eightfold Path, uh, is mindfulness. It is. In fact, that's the linchpin of, of, of the whole thing, in, in my opinion. So mindfulness is right there as part of mental cultivation, as part of what we call meditation. But another uh, aspect of the Eightfold Path is right effort, what they call right effort. And just for the record, a, a third, the third component of bhavana, cultivation, mindfulness, as developing tranquility, peace of mind, samadhi. So these are meditation, meditation practice comprises three, three components, three piece parts, mindfulness and tranquility and right effort. And I want to say a bit about right effort this evening. Indeed, we're going to practice a bit of right effort this evening, assuming the IT gods allow. Uh, and, and what is right effort? This is all about cultivating, developing, maintaining uh, helpful, wholesome mind states um, and avoiding and doing something about their opposite. It's as simple as that. And actually last week with, when Ajahn Barry was here, as a result of somebody asking a very good question, oh, the, the very good question was, uh, what should we do about doubt as practitioners? 
So doubt is one of the hindrances to Buddhist practice, obviously, and, and Achan Bari talked about it. And actually, he talked about it from a very interesting perspective. It's all coming back to me now. He talked about it from uh, the, his perspective as somebody who's practiced Zen Buddhism for quite a long time. So doubt is one of the hindrances. It's a, a, a negative mental state, pretty obvious. I mean, the doubt, you, doubt that you're talking about is doubts about this practice. Right? Maybe it's all a lot of nonsense, that sort of thing. I've been doing this for years. And I'm getting absolutely nowhere with it. It's got to be nonsense. It's that sort of doubt, sort of killer doubt, as far as the practice goes. Um, and uh, and how do we, what do we do then? And and Ajahn Barry talked about it. And I want to pick up another aspect uh, this evening of uh, right effort, which is cultivating uh, metta, cultivating metta, metta bhavana, cultivating metta. <laughs> Uh, and meta, well, I'll say a bit more about what it actually is in a moment. Uh, literal sort of translation seems to be loving kindness, but there are many, there are again, many facets to, to that uh, heart practice, meta bhavana. Uh, and it's an antidote to fear, to anger, to negativity, uh, to ill will, to... Yeah, this critical tendency we always have, you know, the glass isn't even half full you know, <laughs> uh, to anxiety. Uh, I mean, this came to mind uh, for a number of reasons, not, not least uh, I've had my fill of Halloween <laughs> around here over the last week. And one can sort of laugh about it and it's all trick or treat. Um, but, 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 uh, you know, when it gets to the nice new modern house, modern house, new built house right opposite across the street from me, it's not just a pile of uh, uh, a, a pile of this, that, and the other cobwebs or whatever, um, but it included a real live ghost on the front door of a new built house. It's haunted already, and uh, and obviously, I'm looking at this from an internal point of view. Our own our own hauntings, our own you know ghosts and ghouls and whatnot. From the past or indeed for the future that that kind of haunt us actually uh, and generate a lot of anxiety lack of self-confidence defensiveness you know defensiveness a lot of the reason you know a lot of people say oh, I, I'm, I'm angry and you know maybe that's a response to a, a, a sense of inadequacy actually a rather a negative view of oneself so in, in my, well, not just in my book, meta, it, meta, this word called loving kindness is the antidote to a lot of our own um, hauntings and unhappiness. And the, as I say, meta is, is, is loving kindness, uh, kindness, uh, happiness is another quality of it, well-being, uh, goodwill, open-heartedness, compassion. It links up with the, the virtue of compa compassion towards oneself and compassion towards others. These are all facets of, of what metta is, um, is all about. Uh, and it's a practice, uh, it's a heart practice, and it's a practice rather unlike mindfulness, where mindfulness is all about observing what's going on in the mind, observing our thinking, but not messing with it, you know, directing the attention away from our thinking, letting go of our thinking if possible. Metta is all about actually using this ability we all have to think, but in a positive way. If you like, it's positive psychology. I have no problem if somebody wants to call it positive psychology. Uh, and the practice is one about developing this quality of metta, whatever it means, you know, to you and me in the heart, develop, developing this quality uh, for ourselves and sharing it with others. And so it's a good idea when I do this practice myself uh, to, first of all, bring to mind one's own need for this, actually, you know, our own need for a bit of tender, loving care. And uh, we're all human beings. I'm sure life has been pretty good for many of us, but uh, there have been many knocks and disappointments and sadnesses. These little matters of old age, sickness and death, 
right? not getting what we want, and all this kind of stuff. There are hurts in all our lives, and so we need all the tender loving care other people can show us, but also that we've got to give to, develop in ourselves. Just reflect on that. I mean, this is not a question of self-pity, but just remind ourselves, yeah, life hurts. Life hurts, doesn't it? Not all, not all the time, but we've all had knocks and disappointments and so on and so on and so on. Life hurts. We need to develop a bit of kindness for ourselves, compassion for ourselves. And the other side of the coin is to bring to mind very clearly our own good qualities, our own virtues. You know, I suspect most people here tonight, now up to 14, <laughs> are pretty good people, dare I say it. You know, I don't, I'm not encouraging big headedness, but just a realistic appreciation of the fact that they're pretty good people. I doubt if anybody has done anything very bad this evening amongst us. I really doubt that. We're pretty good people. You know, there are the Buddhist precepts and all the rest of it. We may not, you know, be absolutely perfect in the way we do these five precepts, but maybe we make an effort. It's pretty good. Right? So bring to mind our own good qualities, um, our own good deeds. Uh, and if the deed hasn't actually been carried out, our, our good intentions. You know, people say the way to hell uh uh, hell, uh, good intentions are the way to hell or something like that. I think that's nonsense. I think that's nonsense. It's better to have good intentions than bad intentions, for goodness sake. And good deeds usually follow good intentions. If you intend to do something and do it, yeah, pretty good. Um, our good aspirations, but also our good every, you know, like our everyday skills. Why do other people think we're useful people to have around the place? We're nice people to have around the place. Uh, you know, we're probably pretty competent at, at what we do work-wise. Just appreciate the things we can do. Good people, that's us, deserve good things, like loving kindness. So all I want to do is encourage us, because we need it and because we deserve it, I, I, I need us all to, I want us all to uh, make a heartfelt wish this evening, a genuine heartfelt wish. And each one of us can find a form of words for that wish. Mm -hmm. And it may be, now my, 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 my favorite is going to be, may I be well. And, and the reason I do that is, may I be well, this wellness covers, I think, most aspects of my life, to tell you the truth. Physical well-being, mental well-being, may I be well, you know, may I be well. Uh, in these straightened times, you know, may I be able to pay the bills. Uh, fair enough, That's a fair, these are fair, honest, genuine wishes. Or, may I be happy? Or, uh, may I be free from anxiety? May I have good health? May I be free from illness? May I be free from all suffering? And I just invite everybody here to think about uh, a phrase like this, a form of words. Because I'm, we're going to use it, you see. What we're going to do is, um, is, have a, is make it into a little mantra. So this is a very interesting period of medit a, a bit of meditation this evening, because uh, because it will be. So in a meta practice, right, and we're going to use it around a mantra. And then in a few minutes, moments, I'm going to suggest we link it to the breath as well, our main meditation object. So this is quite fun, right? So I'd like you to deliberately think a thought of metta or compassion. May I be well. May others be well. Okay. May I be well. May others be well. Just think the thought. If that, if you like, is the primary meditation object. It's a mantra. It's just a form of words. And actually, this form of words actually means something. May I be well. May others be well. May I be well. The others are. And it doesn't matter at this stage whether we feel it or not. It's definitely a hard practice. And maybe when you bring to mind, you know, kindness, compassion, openness, acceptance, caring, concern, these sorts of qualities resonate in the heart. But if they don't, that's not the point. We're sowing seeds this evening. Do the practice, sow the seeds, cultivate the crops, right? Bawa, bawana, cultivation. This is cultivation. 
So what I can do is just uh, sit back now in a meditation posture, typical sort of meditation posture, alert, comfortable. I think in this practice, it really does help to be quite comfortable, quite comfortable. Or towards relaxation as well as stability and all the rest of it. And this is just using the phrase, using the mantra, may I be well, may others be well, or whatever form of words you use. I shall use this one, may I be well, may others be well, quite okay, may I be happy, others be happy, may I be at peace, may others be at peace. I mean, great, good wishes for you. Uh, just experiment, be creative. <laughs> and now I find this very helpful to link this with the breath. We're wishing metta, loving kindness to ourselves, and we're sharing it with others. May I be well, may others be well. So why not, why not try this? As we breathe in, I wish for myself. As I breathe out, I wish for everybody else. May I be well in breath. May others be well out breath. So this is interesting. This is meta practice. It's using a mantra, and it's doing anapatasati as well, anapanasati as well, mindfulness of breathing. And, uh, may I be well, out breath. May others be well. And that's it. Let's just do that. Remember, periodically, this is a genuine, heartfelt wish. We need it. We deserve it. May I be happy. May others be happy. Breathing into the heart, energizing the mind, body, heart, and breathing out from the heart, sharing it with others. And if you want even more to do, and you're good at visualization, some people, well, I, I don't do this really, but some people, when they're breathing in with a wish for ourselves, they visualize white light streaming into the body. And on the out breath, may others be well, radiating, literally radiating, 
light to other beings. This is a very creative practice. Finding a form of words, of meaningful words, wishing ourselves well-being, sharing that wish of well-being with others. Perhaps what have we noticed already that one of the advantages of using a mantra, a form of words, is that it's more difficult to go off thinking of anything else. Because typically thinking, many of us, is a, a, sil a, a silent speech. But the silent speech right now, may I be well, may I be happy, may others be well, may others be happy. Just make enough effort to repeat the magic formula. And just maybe we discover this is a very pleasant, a very enjoyable practice.
And uh, of course, if this practice for whatever reason doesn't suit you, just let go of the words, back to the in-breath, back to the out-breath. Breathing in, breathing out. May I be well, may I be happy, may I be free from all stress and anxiety. May others be well, happy, free from all stress, anxiety, free from all suffering. I be well, may others be well. I be happy, may others be happy. May I be free from all suffering? May others be free from all suffering. Breathing in a wish for ourselves, on the out breath, sharing that wish with all other beings.
How's it going? Nothing has come through in the chat box yet. Nobody's run away from the class yet. <laughs> So I want to uh, encourage doing a bit more of this. But, you know, at the moment, it's just a form of words, isn't it? And it's neither here nor there whether or not the words inspire feelings in the body, around the heart, for example. But in a way, well, in a way, it'd be quite nice if it if it was um, emotionally a pleasant experience. Um, I'm not saying it should be, but it would just be nice if it was. I mean, to be absolutely honest, some people do this practice and they're turned off by it completely. And that's interesting in itself. But my advice is, that's interesting. Keep doing it and see what happens. As I say, to me, this is all about planting seeds you just plant the seeds you just do your stuff and wait and see what happens but in order to uh, help i find well not just me i mean the buddha had something to do with this as well we deliberately bring into mind the well-being of other people in, in a very in a much more uh, specific way in a much more specific way so, you know, may I be happy, may others be happy. That's, I mean, I know what me being happy is all about. At least I think I do. I don't think I'm completely deluded about that. Different ideas of happiness, I suppose. But anyway, you know, other, may others be well. May others be happy. May others be free from suffering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, why don't we bring to mind uh, uh, people to whom we really kind of mean these good wishes and the amazing thing is often often it's easier to wish good things to other people than it is to wish good things for ourselves because we are very often not always but we're often you know very critical you know, i'm not good enough you know, i'm not good enough to be a buddhist even <laughs> i mean if we're all in line we wouldn't need any to do this anyway <laughs> You know, I'm not good enough for this, that, and the other. I'm, you know, I've got all these character defects. Can't meditate, can't find the time. Well, I don't really try to, all this kind of critical, critical stuff. And underneath all of that, there's this, there's this sense of, of lack of, lack of self-worth, which, as I say, can make us quite spiky in, in other situations, on the defensive the whole time. So it would be nice if we really kind of meant all, all this business about uh, being kind to ourselves and, and then we can be kind to others. It's a, bit, it's a bit phony thinking we can meaningful, meaningfully show kindness and compassion to others if we don't feel it towards ourselves. You know, you can only give something that you've got already and give away something you've got, but I can't give away something I haven't got. And I think it's the same with metta, with loving kindness. So what I'd like to do is for a few more minutes, just continue what we're doing. But I'd like to bring a bit of focus in, which may, you know, may help actually, may help. And uh, yeah, and I may encourage us all to, to uh, in, our, in our minds, name names. You know, think of people who we really like to, you know, send good wishes to, obviously, it's that sort of thing. Anyway, I'll make a few suggestions as we go along. And we can see uh, how we get along with it. So, there we go. compose the body. Get to make sure we're comfortable, which is uh, wriggling around here a bit tonight. Get comfortable. A good enough posture. Bring attention to the body. By the way, there's absolutely nothing wrong and quite a bit to encourage us. You know, we do this body sweeping practice. We could actually uh, link that to 
meta practice and wish, you know, this body good things, may be healthy. That's perfectly, that's a genuine wish. I don't know anybody who enjoys being unwell. Uh, maybe it's, it's made maybe inevitable. You know, old age, sickness, and death is part of the deal of being uh, born as a human being. It is. Uh, but we'd like to wish ourselves all the very best, wouldn't we? Yes. Anyway, so you could combine it with body sweeping. Anyway, set up the body, comfortable posture. Tune into the feeling of the breath. In breath. Out breath. In breath, may I be well, may I be happy. Out breath, put the mantra, may I be, may others be well, may others be happy. Or whatever phrase works for you. May I have peace of mind, may others have peace of mind. May I be free from all suffering, may others be free from all suffering. In breath, out breath. Now, when we bring to mind people who have um, helped us in any way at all, obviously if we've had the good karma to come across, you know, fine, inspiring, wise teachers, you want to say thank you to them. They're not here now, right? I mean, when I do this, so it's a long cost. <laughs> Ajahn Sumedho, I think, is still stateside. I think he's coming back soon. But he's not here at the moment. Uh, another good Buddhist friend of mine is in uh, Spain. And then there's Barry, Ajahn Barry in Spain as well, or somebody else. But people who've helped us in any way. People who, who've given us good advice, given us material support, you know. Anybody, just bring them to mind. And uh, you can mention their names. Wish them good things. But link it, please, with the, the breath, breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, I wish for myself. Breathing out, I wish for this benefactor. Somebody who's really helped me, has been kind to me. I'd like to say thank you, even if you're not here. And my way of saying thank you is to wish you all the very best of health, and peace of mind, material well-being, whatever. On the in-breath, may I be well. On the out-breath, May these folks who've helped me in any way be well too.
And uh, now, let's broaden things out a bit. Bring to mind um, all those people we, we just really feel good about. And we can, um, for any good visualization, we can sort of visualize them either individually or in a group. In our mind, we can name names. On the in-breath, may I be well, they're on the out-breath. These are called good friends. They may be our nearest and dearest. They may be family. They may be the kids. They may be our parents, alive or dead. But good friends, we call them good friends. And when we come across somebody who uh, perhaps we have a bit of trouble with, just note that and move on. I'm well aware that families sometimes are difficult places to be. So don't uh, get snagged on this. On the in-breath, may I be well, may I be happy. On the out-breath, may this good friend, somebody we like, somebody we love, be well, be happy. Be free from all suffering. And I've forgotten our pets. We've forgotten our pets. Hmm. Very often we feel very close to them. May they be free from suffering. We really mean it. So take our time, just work through this list. I hope it's quite a long list of people we really feel good about and wish all the belly and we want to wish all the very best to them. And uh, just notice, as with the people who've helped us, our benefactors, so with uh, our friends, our nearest and dearest, they're not perfect, actually, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. We're dwelling on the good in people, just as we're dwelling on the good, actually, in ourselves. So we recognize we're sending good wishes to people we care about just as they are. It's not, I send you thoughts of loving kindness on condition <laughs> that, no, just as you are. May you be well, may you be happy. And as we do this, it's almost inevitable that we're going to come across somebody we know and care about who is having a bad time of things. Maybe they are sick. So we're wishing them a great big get well soon. Or maybe we encounter somebody who we know really wants something they haven't got. I don't know. Dream something up. Maybe she really wants a holiday in the Caribbean. <laughs> and maybe we think, no, you don't need that. <laughs> Wish them the very best holiday ever. 
the practice, which I think Tibetan Buddhists are very good at, is standing in other people's shoes and wishing for others what they would wish themselves. And gradually expand the, the scope of folks we know to whom we're sending good wishes. Maybe geographically, people who are further away uh, on the other side of the world. Or maybe further away in the sense that uh, we feel less emotionally connected, less ordinary every day, every day folks uh, wish them well. Today, I haven't been out today, the weather's been so bad, but the postman, a young guy, I don't know his name, came and delivered some post. I saw him go away, he wears shorts. What a hero, trudging through the rain <laughs> to deliver a post to me. Or the delivery DPD guy or whatever he is, who dropped off a parcel. What a job. I wish you well. Thank you so much. May you be happy. Or a colleague of mine I barely know, who uh, was emailing, let out that his... Uh, his wife had to have emergency surgery a couple of weeks back. I, I wish him and I wish her, obviously, all the very best. Speedy recovery. So we're fine tuning these good wishes of loving kindness, of well being, according to their need, according to the individual or the groups of individuals. The groups of individuals. So we can expand further. And in breath, may I be well. What about all those refugees in this appalling place in Kent? May they be well. This has nothing to do with the rights and wrongs of their getting here, whether they should be here or not. But right now, I really wish you well. It's a horrible situation to be in. Well, it's easy to make a heartfelt wish, isn't it? So just experiment with this, play with this, see where the little glitches are. Or is it difficult? May I be well, may others be well. All the time, dosing ourselves in thoughts of loving kindness, well-being, compassion, open-heartedness. And by all, all means, um, go to places where there is a, a lot of unhappiness. Uh, easy enough to find that, uh, looking at the news. May I be well, may this suffering over there cease.
may I be well, may I be happy, may I be free from all stress and anxiety, may I be free from suffering. May all beings, may all beings on this planet, wherever they are, whatever sort they may be, may all beings on this very fragile, beautiful planet be well, free from all suffering. Be peace. On the in-breath, may I be well, may I be happy, free from all suffering. On the out-breath, may all of us here this evening, zooming in from wherever we are, be well, happy, free from all stress and anxiety, all of us, and uh, everybody involved with the Buddhist society this evening, Tibetan class, Odan Wangdu looking after us this evening, Wish you all the very best, an act of kind of gratitude. May you be well, may you be happy. Um, a few final thoughts about this. You notice the way that this practice of, of metta, which is part of right effort, kind of links in with uh, other aspects of, of what we're doing. For example, 
I don't know what your experience is, but I find this very um, a very peaceful practice. It links in very well with what they call right concentration, right samadhi, a peaceful mind. I think it does. It works very well, and it supports mindfulness. Obviously, if the you know the, the fewer like negative emotions there are, the fewer disturbances there will be when we you know, sit meditation. You know, instead of being knocked off course by every time the plane flies overhead. Yeah. Well, that's all right. May you, you travel safely. Mm. All, all these bits and pieces fit together. And some people say that, that I've heard some Buddhists say that this sort of practice is, is, in a sense, the fruit of more important practice. You know, when we've sort of developed a lot of good qualities then this good heartedness sort of is the result of it but that's not the way i don't think that's not the way the buddha uh, looks at it um, it's a practice in itself it is part of mental cultivation i don't know whether you're familiar with uh, the, the, the metta sutta the buddha's teachings on, on just this but it begins with this is what should be done. So it's an instruction. This is what should be done. And then there's a whole string of the way to de develop this practice of loving kindness. That's a call to, uh, to action. And you can obviously see, I hope you can obviously see, if you like, what I'd call the therapeutic uh, benefits of this practice, sort of changing our attitudes, our perspective, on the world, uh, our perspective on ourselves. You know, often we have very critical, judgmental minds. Uh, often we're very, we get kind of angry, and very anxious, because often we're kind of a bit defensive. And you can see how this sort of practice, I hope we can see how this sort of practice counteracts this. Therapeutically, it's Good stuff. And I think these days, if you pick up any any book, secular book on mindfulness practice, I should have done it before the class started, but over there, like all sorts of books on mindfulness. Uh, I'm pretty sure in all these secular mindfulness courses, they actually encourage this kind of practice of developing. And they may not call it metta because it's a bit of a technical Buddhist term, but they encourage this as part of the secular practice of mindfulness, actually. Uh, and this is also a practice, I think, you know, particularly on ourselves. I think it's a practice which can give great kind of insight, because if we do it, I think we discover that we're not the kind of negative per person we, we think we are. Uh, I began by sort of saying people people like us, whatever that means, people who are interested in spiritual practice can be very hard on ourselves. You know, we're never good enough. <laughs> we're never good enough, can't we? But hopeless case and all that sort of thing. We do this practice, discover that's not true. We're not who we think we are. You know, we're doing this practice and setting thoughts of goodwill and whatnot to other people, to, like to family members, for, I mean, for example, if, we're having, if we have a difficult relationship, perhaps, or, or at least not a warm relationship, family members, we see people in a different light. You know, we're not who we think we are, and we're not who we think they are, either. There's a lot of insight there into anatta, essentially the doctrine of anat, the, doc, the teaching of anatta, is whatever I think I am, I'm not. Right. Whatever I think I am, I'm not. Yeah, okay. A meta practice fits very well with that um, changing perspective on oneself. So it, it enables us to be a bit more resilient, a bit more confident, a bit less defensive. What's not to like about that? Uh, everybody is unmuted, uh, I hope, and already. Somebody has sent me a message, make you say, it's nice to look at meta practice in a bit of detail. Johnny Good, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to do it in a, a lot of detail. <laughs> That's great stuff. 
Very good. Oh, before I forget, and I, I'm, I'm not trying to wind the meeting up yet. Uh, it's up to everybody here how long we want to keep uh, chatting. But um, next week, it's Richard Bober's turn to uh, lead the class. Uh, and he can't, he likes to, he, he's been happy to do it recently, you know, hybrid, both in person at the British Society and uh, by Zoom as well. But he, there is apparently in London, there are all sorts of strikes and whatnot. And so he can't make it to the Buddhist society. So it's going to be Zoom only next week, Zoom only next week with with um, Richard Bober. Anyway, any more uh, um, comments, things to discuss? Anybody finding it really, really difficult? Um, can you, uh, I'm just looking at chat again. Is anybody putting their hand up or anything like that? Hang on, I'm trying to get sort of a, a view of everybody. There we go. That's better. That's better. Actually, lots of people have got their cameras off, but anybody got any questions or comments? And you, you can switch your mic off if you want to. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, hi. Uh, thanks for the practice. It was uh, really enjoyable. I, I've got a question going back to the start of the, uh, the session when you were talking about the concept of loving kindness. And, and I always, and without being a pedant, I always, in my own head, try to work out what is that? Is it loving kindness? Is, is it kindness with loving? You know, what, what does loving kindness as a practice thing actually mean? If you look at the, the, the words and how they play with each other, yeah, on that. sorry, actually, I'm not hearing you too well. You said, "What is loving?" Cut. Did you mention pain as well? Physical pain? No, no. I, I was saying that in, in context of the concept, the Buddhist concept of loving kindness. Yeah. Is it kindness that is loving or is <laughs> loving kindness? You know, how are those? Yeah, 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 yeah. right. Together? Yeah, I, I've got you. Well, the, 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 the phrase, met, the word meta is often translated as loving kindness. It was all one word, okay, one word. Um, and you can, and and it, it perhaps is, is simpler just to say it's kindness. It's an attitude of kindness, okay? <laughs> I hope that's all right. You know, it's not... <laughs> No, it's a, it's a composite. Look, it's a composite translation of all these Pali words, but loving. Right. But as I say, it, it's it's goodwill. It's that sort of thing. It's not being unnecessarily critical. You know, it's 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 forgiving. It's open. It's accepting. Okay. And, and by the way, it's not you know putting on rose tinted spectacles and seeing everything in the world is absolutely wonderful. It's not. But yeah. it's it's not at all. But it's, if you like, getting a more balanced perspective. I'll give you, I'll give you one example of, of exactly that right now. Now, I'm, I'm going to get political for a moment. <laughs> now, I was no great admirer uh, of uh, our last prime minister, Liz Truss. I really was not. Right? And I think she got it all wrong. Uh, I'm not the only person who thought that. But right now... I mean, I still maintain what I've just said. She got it all wrong. She, you know, yeah. But equally, at the human level, I'd be surprised if she's not having a horrible time right now. At that level, I really feel quite sorry for her, actually. And maybe she's a quite a different person. I have no idea. I have no idea. But as I say, to me, it's quite possible. Well, you know, it's like, yeah, she messed up. And, I, and we've all messed up, and it's like that's you're not a happy bunny. And I, I'm very sorry about that. It's that sort of attitude. So one's not. I don't think one's suspending, you know, your 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 judgments necessarily, but you're perhaps looking at it through a rather different lens, different perspective. Thank you. Other shadows chat box. Aha! Here we go. Right. Good question. Could it be construed? This is meta. Could it be construed as the opposite of ill will? It very definitely could be the opposite of ill will. It is goodwill. <laughs> it's 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 um, you know, we're coming up to Christmas. Yeah, we are. We're coming up to Christmas, and in Christmas, you know, you wish uh, joy, peace, and goodwill 
to everybody. That's meta. There you go. Yeah, it, it is the opposite of ill will. And it's an antidote to ill will uh, as well. You know, they, they uh, people sort of say, oh, I've got this problem with anger and all the rest of it. Uh, or even worse, I'm an angry person. You notice that identity, identity and all that sort of stuff. Well, that's false view. That's identifying with anger. It's quite okay to say there is anger, <laughs> but am I angry? Uh, what kind of conventional you might say that? Right? But, but the, the classic antidote to anger and negativity and ill will is to cultivate this practice. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's quite, I mean, in, in my experience, it's quite, it is quite a deep practice. It really is. Um, I, uh, quite a few years ago, I, I, I apologize for saying this because I'm sure I must have, <laughs> must have said it before, but quite a few years back, I went on a, a meditation retreat at Amrawati and I had no idea what it was going to be like, like all the other ones, I suppose. Uh, but instead, it was 10 days of practicing metta, of practicing loving kindness. Oh, wow. And so I then took it away. And that was my main meditation practice for, you know, uh, a good year. And I still, it's still in my kind of armory. <laughs> and it's, I just find it so uh, um, powerful, really, you know, instead of being always a bit worried, you know, it's that, it's that, it counters this sort of tendency. I don't know whether you, any of you folks are I've got this at all, but you know, you're, you're walking into a room full of strangers, and you've got your hand on the hand on the door handle, and that's like that's feeling of uh before you go in, <laughs> because it's a lack of confidence. No, no, it's, get over that sort of thing. That's I, I thoroughly recommend it. As I say, it really is an integral part of Buddhist practice. It's not. Um, it's not, you know, just icing on the cake. It's, it's the real deal. Uh, uh, as in all these other um, uh, 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 practices of, you know, doing something about uh, negative states of mind and cultivating good states of mind. Yeah. And, and by the way, it's not a question of, of writing ourselves up as being, you know, the greatest thing that's happened since two and a half thousand years ago or anything like that but it's just it's a balancing it's just balancing things out it's balancing the you know the good and the not so good so it's i, I really encourage that and when you look at the um the, the buddha's teachings on on mindfulness i mean it's entirely consistent with with um with those any other questions or comments or I mean did anybody find it really really difficult by the way if you find it really difficult I mean I I, I find anything new really really difficult <laughs> the question is can you can we just keep going <laughs> so, as I say I, 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 lot, I quite a few people uh, are initially rather turned off by this practice for whatever reason uh, and my advice uh, when it comes to meditation in general, it's just sort of hang in there for a bit, explore it before you just write yourself off as not being able to do it. But you notice, I can't the, the, the perception. I can't do this mindful this this meta practice. It's just another negative perception. <laughs> this is going to catch twenty two. <laughs> we need to zap that. So um, yeah. Anyway, are there any other questions or comments? I'm just looking at uh, gradually people are sort of fading away. Well, at least the Zoom line has, has held up all right. Thank you all very much for coming. Stay safe during the week. And I won't be seeing you next week because uh, um, Richard will be taking the class, but I hope to see you all in two weeks' time. Take care. Good night.